what's up y'all i said what's up y'all look at me when i'm talking to you bro nah i'm just messing with y'all man this your boy knockout boxing 86 tv and we in here so check this out before i get going on our video smash the like button subscribe to the channel if you're new here share the video turn on your notifications and don't forget that we live monday wednesday and thursday night at 7 30 p.m central time and you can also catch us live every sunday morning with the singing og kqkc boxing network sunday mornings 9 a.m central standard time and please join the channel for access to exclusive content drop super chats and super thanks when you come by the videos and the live streams and don't forget to um, hit me up if you want to debate in a TKO debate series. Knockout Boxing 86 at yahoo.com is the email. But let's get it cracking, bro. Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence had their grand arrivals yesterday. They had their grand arrivals in Vegas yesterday. And let's talk about it. So, what I basically got from it is Sean Porter stuck between a rock and a hard place. Bud Crawford believes that he really don't need Earl Spence for shit, that he already basically on haggling Hearn's level. And Earl Spence, he believed that he was born for this moment. He think this moment to him is like using the bathroom, basically. It's the same as using the bathroom. That's what this is. He built for this. Let's talk about it, bro. So Sean Porter basically was saying that Bud got to find a way to stop the pressure of Spence. That Bud is, is more versatile, but Spence's pressure could be the difference in the fight. And I, I, Sean Porter just, bro, he, he he really cool with Bud Crawford and he don't want to. He, he doing everything he can not to give it up to Spence, but not also seem like he not a hater at the same time. It's one of those things where you try to be objective, but you can't. <laughs> because you got so much I don't know if the word is jealousy I don't know if the word is disdain but it's just something about Earl Spence that Sean Porter don't want to give him no credit bro he don't want to give him no credit he ain't trying to let him make it at all bro and you know when you ask him a question about this fight all you gotta do is listen to Sean Porter talk for like 10-15 seconds and you know exactly who he rooting for bro you know exactly who he rooting for and who he want to win, man. I blame his daddy, bro. I blame his daddy because when his daddy was working with both of them, bro, he, he favored Earl and shit. And now Sean, he don't like that shit, man. He like, you, that's my daddy. Get your own daddy. He ain't like that shit, bro. But they had him come up for the grand arrival first and get his opinion on the fight. And he gave the basic, you know, breakdown. What I will say is his breakdown be sounding better than a lot of them dudes. Like, it's better than what I hear from Ray Leonard or well, uh, Tim Bradley or those guys, you know what I mean? I, I like what I like what Sean Porter had to say, but it's kind of like get him out the way. We here for Bud and, and Earl now. Bud Crawford came up. Bud Crawford, um, basic answers, basic questions. You know, he in shape. Came with his family. Came with his team. But one thing, bro. One thing that just, and it's one of the things I point to to. One of the reasons psychologically and mentally why I prefer Spencer's mindset going into this fight, bro. He was asked a question about how you get a win over this. This puts you with the all-time greats, you know, Hoy Hagler, Hearns, blah, blah, blah. He said, I'm already one of them. I'm already up there with them. And I'm listening to him like, bro, like, no, you're not. And when you, when you say that, I'm already, like... Anyone with the mindset of I've already arrived and shit, I'm already this, I'm already that. Bro, are you as hungry as you should be to go out there and do what you need to do to get the job done, bro? Y'all can say I'm reading too much into it. Y'all can say that, but y'all told me I was reading too much into the whole Stephen Fulton monster anyway shit. Look how that worked out. Oh, you reading too much into it. Cool, boy, and them, they confident. They know what they gonna do. They confident. They this, they that. He went in there and fought scared the whole goddamn fight. He was worried about monster power like I told y'all he was. And for good reason. Because he got stopped in the eighth round like I said he would, bro. So y'all can say the shit don't matter. But, bro, the shit that I keep hearing about him not need. He just, he continues every time to want to downplay Earl Spence so bad. To where it's getting it in his mind. To where he's telling us basically that I'm already this. I'm already that. 
You already with Haglin Hearns, man. Stop that bullshit. Stop that bullshit. Look, Haglin Hearns so solidified. Whoever win this fight still got work to do to catch him, bro. Feel me? Like, the shit that Haglin Hearns accomplished in the sport of boxing and the people that they fought and the people that they beat, even the people that they lost to, whoever win this fight, even after this fight, bro, you still got work to do to get up there with them. And you talking about you already there? Okay. That already there mentality. I don't really need this fight for my legacy. This is just a cherry on top of my career. All of that shit, okay. That shit better not get in there and get rough for you. Because that shit get in there and get rough. I'm telling y'all, bro, he about to fold. Like a cheap ass lawn chair. He about to fold, bro. Watch. And then come back and see me Sunday. He about to fold, bro. I, I see it coming. Because if you got that mindset, boy, if you go in there and it's any kind of resistance. And that shit get tough on you. You going to remember, man, it's just a cherry on top of my career. I'm already a Hall of Famer. You know what? Let me, let me just bow out gracefully. Like, all right, bro, watch. Watch what I tell y'all. So that was kind of eye-catching. Like, dog, you not, you nor Earl. Neither one of y'all is on Hagler Hearns level yet, bro. Stop. And even if you win, you still got work to do. Hag Marvin Hagler is the greatest middleweight of all time. Hearns got wins over Roberto Duran, bro. Hearns is one of the most deadliest punchers in the history of boxing. That man won titles all the way up to like 168 pounds. He's a skinny ass, small ass dude starting in lower air weight classes. Bro, no. No, sir. No, sir. Ain't no, ain't neither one of y'all got no Ray Leonard on your resume, bro. I'm sorry. Even though Ray Leonard beat both of them, bro, you ain't got no. No, neither one of y'all got no Roberto Duran, the greatest lightweight of all time. Whoever win this fight, bro, you will not be the greatest welterweight of all time. Terrence Crawford definitely isn't the greatest junior uh, welterweight of all time, and he ain't the greatest lightweight of all time. But you are already on haggling hurts. But, man, stop that shit, bro. Stop that bullshit, man. So that shit, throw that shit out the window. For um, Earl Spence, confident, um... Look like he ready for the moment. I don't I don't know what what is gonna be on fight night, but he definitely looked more comfortable than the two of the two. Confidence, you know what I'm saying? Talking his shit, saying this what he born to do. You know, again, I, I prefer he had less of an entourage with him. You know what I'm saying? Like you can tell who been in big moments like this and who hasn't. You can tell who was, you know what I'm saying, building up to this moment and who hasn't. Like, Crawford got to bring everybody. They ain't never experienced it before. Let me get my whole team up here. Feel me? And they and here they go. And the whole stage is filled. You get Earl, you got him, his trainer, his son, his daddy, his best friend. The people that's always with him. So, he just seemed more comfortable in the moment. Grand arrivals ain't got shit to do with the fight. It's something we got to talk about. It's something that I'm interested in, obviously, as a fight fan. And uh, I heard people talking about Bug weight cut and Earl weight cut. Man, you're going to have Bug Crawford fans saying Earl look weight drain. Earl fan going to say Bug look weight drain. I know they both in phenomenal shape. They both professionals. And we ain't doing that shit. The weight ain't got, got nothing to do with the fight. The better fighter going to win because he better, bro. But overall, Grand Arrivals is all right. I'm, I'm literally looking forward to the press conference more and then the weigh-in even more and then the fight more than anything else. But Grand Arrivals is cool to talk about. You get a couple of couple little um, tidbits in there. And one thing that I did get that stuck out to me that I'll end the video with, Bud Crawford better be what he and what his fans believe that he is. Because if he's not Monster in a way and Earl or Stephen Fort, if he's not this great generational talent and he happens to be what I see, which is a very good fighter with some real big holes defensively and durability wise, and Earl get in there and start chipping away at him, 
that mentality of I already made it. I ain't got nothing to prove. This just the cherry on top. That shit could make you get in that ring and fold up. I prefer the hunger. I prefer the 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 the, the tenacity. I prefer I prefer that acting like this shit is everything. Over the Bud Crawford method of acting like it ain't nothing. It's just another day in the office. We gonna see though. We gonna see if I'm right or wrong. I can't wait. I can't wait. Y'all let me know what y'all think of the Grand Arrivals. Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence Jr., man. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Comment below. Smash the like, sub to the channel. Share the video. Turn on your notifications. And don't forget we live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night. See y'all soon. Peace out.